Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. If you're new here, hi, I'm Maddie. I'm a K-5 STEM teacher and ed tech coach in Los Angeles. I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers and right now I'm doing Vlogmas and today is the last day of Vlogmas. It's the 25th day in December. So Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate and it's a huge relief to me to finally be done with Vlogmas. If you aren't familiar with Vlogmas, basically what I've been doing is I've been posting a new video every single day in December up until Christmas or today. So today is my last and final video in my Vlogmas video series. And I thought that it would be a great way to sort of close off this time by talking about my top five ed tech tools for teachers. During this 2020-2021 school year, teachers have really been using technology more than ever before. And so I thought that this would be a great way to sort of close off this year by talking about my top five ed tech tools for teachers. I'm an ed tech coach, so I spend so, so, so much time playing around with these tools. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, Stop Motion Studio. Stop Motion Studio is, and I quote, the world's easiest app to get you into stop motion movie making. Stop motion animation is a hit with students of all ages. I use this app with my elementary students, but I've also seen high schoolers get so excited about it too. Stop Motion Studio, as the name suggests, allows students to create high quality animated movies and short films with ease. I mean, the interface, it's easy to use. It's so simple and it's easy for students, like I said, of all ages to navigate, which I think is probably the best part. So students, the way it works is students can take a series of photos and then they put that all together to make a stop motion movie. There are a bunch of different features that I'd like to point out. So there's an overlay mode that shows the differences between frames. There's animation guides. There's even an interactive timeline that shows the frames at the bottom that kind of allows students to stay organized when they're making their movies. And students can even add special effects. So kids love this. They can add backgrounds. They can add fade effects. They can even use built-in music and sound effects. And they also can narrate their films too. So this is specifically great, I think, for education. And so this app, like I said, it's really great for content creation. And it's great for having students show what they know. Um, so in my opinion, I mean, what better way for students to demonstrate their understanding and also for them to gain technical skills too, that's kind of cool, then by learning how to create their own stop motion animation. Which brings us to the next tool on my list, number two, Flipgrid. Flipgrid has been a really, really popular tech tool for a couple of years now, but I think the attention that it's gotten is for a really good reason. So in case you aren't familiar with Flipgrid, it is a video discussion platform that I've seen used with preschool students, and I've also seen used with grad students. I myself actually used Flipgrid as a grad student back in 2019, and I still use it today with my elementary students, my early elementary students. So Flipgrid, like I said, great for all ages, just like Stop Motion Studio. Flipgrid's shtick, its thing, is that it amplifies student voice and it empowers learners of all ages. And it's totally true. Flipgrid engages students specifically through the power of video. So the way that it works is teachers can create and share discussion topics with their learning communities, so with their classes. Teachers can also add co-teachers, by the way, which in the Flipgrid universe is called co-pilots. And all students need to do is they either need to download the app or visit the Flipgrid website. And then what they do is they enter a unique join code. So I really like these join codes. I think it makes it easier for students to log in. Um, and then they can respond to the discussion prompt that the teacher has created by recording a short video. So these videos, by the way, they can be shared with the entire class or they can be shared with just the teacher, depending on how the teacher sets up the assignment. So that is one cool feature of Flipgrid. You have the option for all students to see it or just uh, just the teacher. I think that's kind of a neat feature. 
Another thing that I think is important to point out about Flipgrid is that it has these really fun filters and stickers that students can actually use to overlay on their video. So something that I and a bunch of other educators too, uh, this is something I hear people talking about all the time that they've noticed during distance learning, is that a lot of students feel uncomfortable with face-to-face -face communication via video on platforms like Zoom, for example. Um, and so what's cool about Flipgrid is that it gives students an opportunity to share their faces and their voices in a way that's really fun and playful and educational and also safe for students. So Flipgrid is just a really incredible tool, tool that I'd highly recommend you check out if you haven't already. Next on my list, we have number three, Google Jamboard. Jamboard has recently exploded. And I mean, exploded. Have you guys noticed this online like I have? I've seen a gigantic increase in the use of the tool over the past couple of months, which is pretty much the main reason why I've added it to my list of the top ed tech tools of 2020. First of all, I love the tool, but it's also very popular. And so I think it's important to point out on this list. So Jamboard, in case you aren't familiar with it, it's a part of the Google suite. And it's a digital whiteboard that allows for collaboration for teams and for classrooms. So Jamboard, I would like to point out, it was not created for education specifically, but neither was Google Docs or Google Slides. And of course, educators are so creative. Um, but, I, but I like to explain it to teachers by saying that it allows for the whiteboard style experience that we have in the classroom, even when students aren't physically located in the same room. So AKA, it's really great for distance learning, but I think it's great for in-person teaching too. So as the teacher, the way it works is you can create what's called a jam, which is a blank whiteboard. So imagine a blank screen and you can edit and share it with students who can then collaborate on that jam file. So students in your class, they can collaborate on that jam anytime, anywhere, as long as they have internet access. Much like how you can collaborate on Google Docs or Google Slides, it's very similar. So everything updates in real time. Um, Jamboard has a bunch of different tools that I think are great for bringing ideas and learning to life. So for example, students can draw or show their work with different pen tools. There are these really cool pen tools that students can choose from. What Jamboard is actually the most well known for though is this sticky note style brainstorming. So on the left hand side of Jamboard, if you're using the tool, there's a sticky note button that students can click on that can actually allow them to add these sort of sticky note style brainstorms to the blank jam. Students can also insert photos, they can insert GIFs and stickers. And as the teacher, students can technically do this too, but I think it's a really great tool for teachers specifically, is you can highlight specific elements using the laser pointer tool. So if you're teaching remotely, for example, and on Google Meet or on Zoom, Jamboard can be a really great tool for you to use to actually use the laser pointer to highlight specific things that you'd like to point out for, to students during live teaching. Overall, Jamboard is a wonderful collaboration tool and I highly recommend you check it out. And that's why it's on my list of my top five ed tech tools of 2020. <laughs> All right, so now on to number four, Pear Deck. So I could go on and on and on about Pear Deck. It is an interactive presentation tool that syncs perfectly with Google Slides. You guys know I love Google Slides and everything that it can do. And so Pear Deck is really, really great for interactive presentations. The way it works is that teachers can create slide presentations and then using Pear Deck, they can add interactive questions and elements that are great for increasing student engagement. So during class, teachers are able to monitor both individual student progress and whole class progress, which is why I think it makes it a really great tool for formative assessment as well. So in thinking about these different question types, there are a bunch of different question types that teachers can add to their slide deck. So there's free response questions with short and long text options. 
there's multiple choice questions from your typical true false to your standard, you know, A, B, C, D multiple choice. There are also some more open-ended features too, more open-ended type questions. So there's draggable questions, which are really fun and interactive for students, in my opinion. And then there's also these drawing questions that can be, again, more open-ended depending on what subject you teach. Uh, the drawing questions too can be really fun for just fun activities that you do with students, uh, things related to social emotional learning. Um, so there's a bunch of different question types, like I said, and another really awesome feature about Pear Deck that I do want to point out that not a lot of teachers realize exists is the Pear Deck website has so many resources for teachers. They even have this thing called a Pear Deck Orchard that has a really extensive library of ready-made editable templates for teachers. I think that these templates are great to use specifically when you're first starting out with Pear Deck um, because I think they, they can help you get an idea for how you can use the tool to its fullest extent. So check out the Pear Deck Orchard if you've never seen it before. It's a really wonderful resource. And so lastly, for my final tool, number five, Go Guardian. Go Guardian is the best tool out there, in my opinion, for understanding student behavior online. But above all, Go Guardian is amazing for helping keep students safe. In terms of their products, GoGuardian has four main products. So they have Admin, Teacher, Fleet, and Beacon. So GoGuardian Teacher allows teachers <laughs> to gain real-time views into student activity. So basically, in a nutshell, what this means is that you can know what students are doing on their devices in real time. So for example, if you are teaching and a student is off task or needs help, as the teacher, you can monitor what the child is doing and you can provide support when they need it. You can also do things like limiting browsing and also view student browsing history. And so what's nice about this is that as the teacher, you don't necessarily have to worry constantly about what students are doing on their screens from a classroom management perspective. And so instead, you can really focus on teaching students with fewer online distractions. So that's kind of how I like to frame Go Guardian to teachers is that they kind of handle all of the screen management stuff, which then allows you to actually focus on teaching content. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning about my top five ed tech tools for teachers. If you liked it, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and thank you again for joining me on this vlogmas journey, and I'll see you back here soon. Bye, friends.